Scientists established and confirmed the following through many experiments. When you're close to someone you care about, your breathing and heartbeat can synchronize. This is how the connection is established between the baby and his relatives, between those who sing in a choir. When someone you care about is not feeling well, you can just hold their hand and it will alleviate their suffering. That's what they say. My question is, first of all, do you believe it? There is nothing to believe. It is so. Is it? Yes. Is that how it works? Yes, that's how it works. What's the basis of such miracles? Please tell me. Why are they miracles? How could they not be? Medicine wouldn't work, but I take a man by the hand and suddenly we begin to synchronize. Your inner energies begin to flow into him through tactile contact and regulate him. How does this work? Does he tune in to me? Yes. The same heartbeat? Yes, yes, yes. There's a very important point here mentioned twice. It is a loved one. Well, a loved one can be in spirit, in temperament, or in inner connection. In inner connection. Can this work on someone not close to me? No. It can't? I don't think so. So closeness really matters. Right. I see. So if we wanted to help a person who is ill, do I need to first tune myself to seeing him as someone close to me? Is it possible to tune yourself to feel close to another in order to help him? Yes. How does this system work? Can you tell me? How do I tune myself? You have to feel his inner world where he is out of balance. This person, right? Yes, and try to influence him to come back to a state of balance. So you're putting the main responsibility on me now. You are the healthy one. Yes, let's say I'm healthy. Well then, it is on you to do this. So I have to understand. In order to help him, I have to... He can only do one thing, comply. I see. This too is not easy, but the rest of it is dictated by you. So, if a person asks for help, my job is to feel close to him. To support him. Support him? Yes. Turns out this is my job. Yes. He has to do nothing but ask. I would say so. Really? I see. I want to talk about global concerns with you now. These are tough times for humanity. Difficult. It's hard on the masses. In order to help them, bring them out of this state somehow, what should we do? This is a problem. What can we do? Bringing them out of this state is hardly for the best. Really? Yes. So if they were put into this state, it's for a reason, right? Right. I see. Therefore, we need to think of how to bring them to the best state, while getting out of the descent they are in may not be the best course of action. I see. So, it's not about giving a warm hug or making someone feel good. Rather, it could even be an affront. It can be. Really? Yes. How to understand it? We cannot understand it yet. Okay, so tell me please, the wisdom of Kabbalah and you keep saying the world is suffering. Kabbalah came to help people in some way. Precisely. To get out of suffering or rise above it? Which is it? To rise out of suffering. To rise out of suffering. Yes. So what does it offer? It offers us to rise. How? By reaching out to each other and supporting each other. We don't need anything else. Only by mutual help can we lift each other up and rise together. Is this the whole science? Yes. What's hard about it? To love your neighbor as yourself. That's it? That's it. I see. Here's where we close the curtain and turn off the lights. I see. Well, a person still thinks he can somehow come to this some way. I think not. No? What does the science say? That you can't come to this? You can't. Does it say that? It does. The more I live, the more I am sure a person cannot come to this on his own. That's an important point. On his own, right? Right. This is the most important thing. What should one do to come to love your neighbor as yourself? He must at least realize that if not for nearing with others, not to mention voluntarily with his eyes closed, moving toward each other as in the dark, if we do not act this way, we are all doomed. So, in fact, one should suppress all resistance to such an attitude toward others, right? Right. All his ego, everything he lives by.
Absolutely. That's the only way. I see, and our science seems to say that's when the moment will come, right? Yes. When you rise above suffering, will we ever implement it? Let's sum it up. It depends on what kind of suffering we go through. We can do it sooner or later. Is suffering the main thing here? Suffering will force us. We don't seem to be finishing on an optimistic note. Well, I've never been particularly optimistic. You've been less optimistic about man lately. I'm not optimistic about man at all. But you always say through suffering. Only. So we only understand pain. Through the rod to happiness. Through the rod to happiness. Can we not act before then? Before the bullet? Before the stick? Can't we act? No. Then what does this science offer? It explains the natural laws of nature and man's role in it. Therefore, we cannot blame nature. Of course, blame yourself. Right. So, if I learn it, will it let me act ahead of the rod or a bullet? In the measure of what you want it, it will let you. So it depends on me now? Yes. I've been given a tool and it depends on me? Yes. So is it possible to act before the suffering? Even right now. You've just changed your angle. You said that suffering basically pushes a person. Well, if today's suffering is enough for you already, you can run from it toward correction and achieve the best state. So the measure is important to be able to say, that's enough, I've had it, right? Right. And then I'll be moving ahead of the rod. Yes.